Want to support the straight red card? No, you say? Ah, well, hey, we're not exactly becoming millionaires doing this show. And we know that's not exactly your problem. But after numerous requests for a podcast, we thought we'd provide you with exactly what you weren't looking for. The official The Straight Red Card t-shirt. So, be cooler than all your other soccer friends and get one. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And, well, you know the rest of the spiel. Uh, we're also carrying uh, the dog's artistic renderings of various U.S. and MLS players. So if you're interested, just go here. And uh, again, thanks for humoring us and uh, support the straight red car, even if you hate, say, Brett, as we all know how divisive he can be. So uh, now back to the show. You're really risking it when there were players out there that were available. Listen, it's fine. You took you took Ching, right? But you could have gone out and got Michael Facito from the Seattle Sounders. I mean, there's a guy that's going to be around a while, right? Still, right? Yeah. Um. And and you know. Well, in, in all honesty, if they picked him, they'd lose out on Riley. Well, and Riley, Riley offered two other players. I mean, you did pick up Justin Braun, who is who is an experienced MLS striker. I, I understand that there there are all kinds of ins and outs of this, and there's, but I, I don't think I'd screw with Ching. There are a lot. There was a lot of young talent out there, mm-hmm. and then some some experience as well. And I'm going down the list here: players that were available and didn't get picked. Uh, we can start with Freddie Adu. I think you have an opinion about that, but to me, um, a kind of sad that Philadelphia didn't bother to protect Freddie, but maybe it's because. The salary that he's, you know, that he has is something that the impact didn't want to take under their wing to begin with. That'd be with. my guess too. Yeah, I mean, that well, would... when we uh, Marsh came out and said prior to the expansion draft, the age, experience, and the contract are going to be taken into consideration. That includes the amount they are being paid and the number of years they have left. So Freddie Adu just signed with MLS. And I'm sure, I mean, I haven't looked at his salary, but I'm pretty sure it's pretty hefty size. I'm not sure the impact really wants to take a chance. I mean, I mean, he's, he was a bit player for uh, Philly, in all honesty. Yeah. But, so, I mean, it's a risk. Yeah, it is a risk, and he could he doesn't even start for Philly, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you yeah. know, came back from, from his his little uh, uh, time in Turkey. and Vacation. Yeah. <laughs> not 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 starting in the MLS, but there were other players that were un- unprotected, that you know were promising. But maybe they're seeing something we didn't. I mean, you talk about Bright DK, um, Sal Zizzo Boy. from Portland, both very I think had pretty good seasons. Uh, Eddie Johnson was left unprotected. You know, there's a guy that used to score goals in the MLS, um, and and I would think that he has more years left on him than Ching does. Again. I'm just throwing out names of uh, when you get to Real Salt Lake, you know Arturo Alvarez. Um, you know, well, there's a possibility. stick with Real Salt Lake. You know, you also have um, Ned Grabboy. Yeah, I was going to mention Ned Grabboy. I mean, now, I mean that would have been an, uh, I would have imagined that would have been a better pick than a Colin Warner because he's he's kind of a team leader. Ned Grabboy. <laughs> Uh, Robbie Russell's too old, and Andy Williams are too old, so um, that's smart. Leave them up. You got Bobby Convey. He was left unprotected. Jacob Peterson from San Jose, both. I think well, both. Do you, really, do you really want Convey? I, yeah, I don't think anybody wants Convey. I mean, I mean Apparently, that, that's, 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 yeah. It'd be like you're adding like a poison to your locker room. Yeah. It doesn't seem to have, uh, agree with much, much of anybody at this point. He is one bitter kid as far as I, I mean, everything I have heard from players and from other people. I'm not going to get into names, but, um, you know, a guy doesn't like people. He doesn't like people, and that's okay. There are people out there that don't like people. So, yeah, maybe it's a good idea not to get, but, you know, Jacob Peterson's a good player. And I already mentioned Michael Fasito. What about Nate Jaqua, man? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we won't get it. I think Seattle had their fingers crossed <laughs> for that one. No, I mean, and, and, and even just to focus on uh, a couple other players here, I mean, you had Jeremy Hall from FC Dallas, Kevin Burns from uh, Columbus Crew. You have Kanji and uh, Anthony Wallace I at mean, Colorado. Kevin Burns is fine, but 
I mean, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You look. You're looking at a player that they put. They picked from Columbus. They picked uh, Josh Gardner. Yeah, I agree. So, I mean, if you're gonna, if, I mean, it it just seems that if you're looking, I don't know. I don't know. It, I I just thought there were other options that were better. I oh mean, yeah. If you look, I mean, even if you look at, even if you look at Chicago per se, you have Dan Gargan. Dan Gargan once he went to Chicago, he became a starter at the right back, and uh, did pretty damn well actually. Yeah. I was kind of surprised that he wasn't picked. Um, I don't know. I wasn't because there's so many other players that are of higher quality than that that weren't picked. I mean, when you look at from a position, position wise. Well, look at Dynamo. You have Daniel Cruz and Hunter Freeman. They weren't picked, and those are both solid players that are in teams that have been successful. He's also Daniel. Daniel Cruz is also a midfielder. Hunter Freeman is a more. If we're talking about comparison to say Dan Gargan. No, I wasn't talking about tit for tat here, but I know. Yeah, what I'm not saying there aren't other options that better options that were picked. I'm just surprised because you know Gargan's an experienced uh, defender. So is Hunter Freeman, like you mentioned. I mean, there are some shocking, uh, some shocking uh, picks and some. Matty Belushi. I mean, the guy's been solid wherever he goes. I mean, there's a good pick. Michael Stevens, I thought, has been great for L.A. Uh, I'm just throwing out some names here. Um, like I already mentioned, Mike Con DeSantos from FC Dallas. Wells Thompson, we mentioned him. Uh, what, about, what about Greg Sutton from New York? He's Canadian, so he fills that role, plus he's an experienced goalkeeper. <laughs> All right. Well, an option. This is an option. I, mean, that, I, I so, don't know. I'm not up to date to what all the uh, Canadian rules are because I know that the American players count as domestic now as well. But I don't know if they still have a limit on the number of Canadian players that Canadian teams have to the, have that. The last pick they're going to waste this thing on is a goalkeeper. I'm just telling you. That's why you're just. That's just not going to happen in this round. Is that uh, Canadian? I don't think they care. And I don't even think... Again, I don't know if there's a specific limit anymore. I don't think... And I also, also don't think they care if they speak French. Because, I mean, listen, Bona Kandul wasn't protected either, right? From the Red Bulls. And it, and he... I would pass on Bonehead as well. Bonehead. <laughs> I mean... If, if, they're going, if they're going to pick a young squad with potential, why would you pass up on Sunni... I'm going to pronounce this name, but hopefully I pronounce it correctly, but Sunni Saad. From a uh, sporting Kansas City, yeah, you have, you have a player here who's young, just out of college. What is he like? Nineteen years old. He's got the physical attributes to uh, to excel in this league, and he can uh, he can score goals. I mean, he's only. I mean, I'm only going off of what he's done with the youth teams and uh, college teams at that. Mm-hmm. But I mean, here's a kid with talent. Yeah. Well, he, again, he's a project, just like uh, a lot of the players they picked. But still, you only get. I mean, listen. If I'm only getting that handful of picks. You know what I'm going after? I mean, it's just me. And it isn't unproven youth. I, you know what I'm going to get? I'm going to get eight guys that I, 11, 10 guys that I think are really solid players that I know I can depend on. Then I'm going to go out and I'm going to sign a bunch of, you know, players from around the world. And then I'm going to develop youth players for my own freaking youth program. But maybe that's just me. Um, maybe I'm being a little too conservative. I think what they Marsh did, and he knows more about some of these young guns than, than, than we do, is he's done his research, and maybe these guys are better than we think. But I guarantee you half of them don't amount to a hill of beans. I'm just telling you, half of the guys that he picked are going to be playing NASL soccer Within the next two years, that's just how it goes. I'm just telling I'm not about, you. Not about half, but I would say it's pretty damn close. I think it's going to be half. Now we'll monitor it, and then you know you can yeah. call, call me out later on it. Yeah, <laughs> but, we'll monitor it. <laughs> that's, that's on the top of my list to do. <laughs> we will monitor. I, if, if, one of all, if one of our reader, if one of our listeners wants to monitor it, and then uh, tell us that we're wrong or right. Yeah, give us a call two years That'd from be great. now. Great. But that's that's the least of my concern. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, they do have some some guys impact that they did sign outside of this whole deranged uh, expansion draft. Um, they got uh, Brian Arguez, good player. Um, 
not a real whole lot of experience though, except for the NASL level because he didn't get much time in Europe. No. And then you got Nelson Rivas, who actually at one point was thought of as this incredibly great player. He's going to be this awesome player. Entered, you know, bottom for almost seven million something around there, seven million dollars. He just never amounted to what anybody thought he was going to be. So and, you know, he's he's a five eleven center black center back slash right back player. Mm-hmm. So. I mean, at that point, I'm imagining that they're probably going to have to utilize him as a right back because I'm thinking that he's going to be a little short for uh, to play the center back. Although it's possible that he could. I'm not, I'm not discrediting five eleven is not that much different than say six one. Mm-hmm. I just imagine that he'll probably be utilized as a right back. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? And now, now Bill Gaudet, who was their goalkeeper last season before they became an MLS team, I and mean, there's a good solid goalkeeper. To, can, to sign back on as a backup, or even as a starter. I've always thought very highly of Bill Gaudet. Um, they also signed in a uh, former League Two fullback midfielder, uh, Kamara. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm not going to pronounce his name. Asun, he, Kamara, he, he, yeah. Well, he didn't, they re-signed him on. He was one of the players that were brought back. He was already uh, there, yeah. He, he was regarded as uh, the Impact's MVP of the year. Yeah, he was a holdover. Yeah. But as we said before, there aren't many uh, holdovers um, for a guy who the owner, Joey, we'll just call him Joey because I think that's funny, um, said they didn't even need this draft. Well, he didn't say that literally. He just simply told Garber, you can sign me up now. I'll play with the team I have now. 